We're going to be learning some new identities in this section and adding them to our list of others. So we're still looking at the reciprocal identities, the Pythagorean identities, the even odd identities, everything from the last section as well. And, we're, and again, with that note card that you're making, it should actually probably be a note page now, we need to make sure that we add these as well. So these are the cosine for sum or difference identities, and these are the cofunction identities. Now the cofunction identities we've looked at before, but these are the ones you'll want to add to your note card. Let's go ahead and look at the cosine for a sum or difference, just to make a couple notes before we start working problems. So I would like you to be aware of a couple things. The cosine of a plus b, a and b are some angles. a and b can be in degrees or radians. This does not equal, and I cannot emphasize this enough, this does not equal cosine a plus cosine b. Okay, you may be able to find one angle once in a while that allows this to split up and be accurate, uh, but it would be kind of just a one-time thing. It wouldn't work for all angles. So first of all, please note that you cannot distribute the cosine through the sum or the difference. And this is the same for the difference as well. So this does not equal cosine of A minus cosine of B. Uh, a couple other notes, A and B can be degrees or radians. And if you have a couple uh, trouble working with radians, you can convert everything to degrees if you're better with degrees and then work from there as well. Now let's go ahead and establish why I can't distribute this cosine through. Let's, so let's look at that example. So let's say we had something like uh, cosine a minus b and then let's go ahead and plug in two values here. Let's use pi over 2 minus 0. Well, pi over 2 minus 0 is definitely pi over 2, and the cosine of pi over 2 we know is 0. So let's say we're going to do the same problem, and I think that I should distribute my sine, or sorry, my cosine in this case. We'll be learning these for sine in a different section. So again, this is wrong. So what if I said this was cosine of pi over 2 minus the cosine of 0? Well, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, and so I'd get negative 1 here. And we already know our answer is 0, so this cannot be correct. And this would be true for other angles as well. This is just an example to show that. So those are a couple notes about the sum or difference for the cosine. And then with the cofunction identities, please be aware that even though we have 90 degrees minus theta equals sine theta, this would hold true for pi over 2 minus theta as well, meaning I could be working in degrees or radians. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples, and I will pull most of these from my math lab, so that way that they'll be familiar to you when you start working on your homework. So for our first one, it says find the exact value of the function below. Okay. So again, hopefully you have your note page or your note cards with the cofunction identities and the sum and difference for cosine identities as well. So what this, these identities allow us to do is they allow us to find uh, the exact value, not a decimal, but an exact value for other angles other than just like 30, 60, 45, pi over 2, pi, etc. So if I look at the cosine of 15 degrees, what I want to do here, oh, that's a negative 15 degrees. What I want to do here then is I want to find two angles that I know the sine and cosine for and see if I can add or subtract them in such a way to get a negative 15 degrees. Well, I think there could be more than one option here, uh, but I'm thinking about 30 degrees minus 45 degrees. That would be a negative 15. And then I also think about things like 45 minus 60 degrees would also give us a negative 15. So there's definitely more than one option here. Now remember, this does not equal, do not take this and say cosine of 30 degrees minus cosine of 45 degrees. Um, you cannot distribute a trig function through the sum or difference of its argument. So what we want to do is we want to use the cofunction, or sorry, the uh, cosine difference identity. So we want to use the cosine of a minus b. That's equal to the cosine of a, cosine of b, now the sine is going to be opposite here, so it's going to be a plus sine A, sine B. So that's what we're using here. 
So I'm going to have 30 degrees minus 45 degrees equals cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, plus, and again it's opposite of what we have here, sine of 30 degrees, sine of 45 degrees. And then we know all the cosines and sines for these angles. The cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. The sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. Now if we simplify these, I get square root of 6 over 4 plus square root of 2 over 4. And then I can write this as a single fraction. There's nothing I can combine or cancel here. So I get root 6 plus root 2 all over 4. This is the cosine of negative 15 degrees. And again, I could have used other angles as well. 45 minus 60 comes to mind. I probably could have found angles in the second, third, or fourth quadrants to do this with. But sticking in the first quadrant or the smallest angles possible is a good idea. Let's go ahead and look at one that's in radians as well as an example. So for one that's in radians, let's go ahead and pick this one. So when they're in radians, sometimes it's a little bit harder to work with because I don't know my radians as well and we have to be working with fractions. For instance, is this a pi over 6 plus pi over 3, pi over 4 minus pi over 3? You know, these are harder to work with. So if you're not good with your fraction using your radians, I would recommend converting this first. So the cosine of 5 pi over 12. So let's go ahead and take 5 pi over 12 and convert this to radian, or sorry, to degree form. So the pi's will cancel here. And then 12 goes into 180 15 times, and 5 times 15 is 75 degrees. So this would be the same as the cosine of 75 degrees. Now when we see it in terms of cosine of 75, that brings to mind two very common angles, 30 plus 45 is 75. So this is going to, I'm going to use the cosine of A plus B in this case. That would be cosine A, cosine B. Sine will be opposite, so it will be minus sine A, sine B. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in what we know here. So this is the cosine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees, cosine of 30 degrees, cosine of 45 degrees, minus the sine of 30 degrees, sine of 45 degrees. So the cosine, we know the sines and cosines of all these angles. So the cosine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 30 is 1 half. This is looking familiar. Sine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so now when I multiply and simplify, I'd have root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. I can't combine these like the root 6 minus root 2 and get root 4 or something like that. They're not like terms because the radicals have to be the same, but I can write them as a single fraction. So root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. So this tells me then that the cosine of 5 pi over 12, which we converted to be the cosine of 75 degrees, is root 6 minus root 2 over 4. Now you could check this on your calculator. If you were in radian mode on your calculator, you would just go ahead and plug this in and find the cosine and find a decimal approximation, and then plug this in as well and get the decimal approximation for these radicals and the difference and divide by 4. And they'll be the same, if that's true, if I've done this correctly, they will be identical. Now what you can't do is when it says exact value, you cannot put in the decimal form because that's not exact value. They're looking for radians, or sorry, radicals and fractions. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some other examples as well. I want to make sure when you start on your homework set that you have plenty of examples to pull from. So for this one, let me see if I can get a hold of it. Number Okay, so for this one, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rewriting the expression as a single value. So that means we're going to be taking this and rewriting it, and hopefully things will cancel. 
And again, I don't know what angle alpha is here, but I do know that I can use the sum identity for cosine. So what I'll use here is cosine of a plus b. And I'm using the plus because I have a plus here. And that's going to be equal to cosine a, cosine b, plus sine a, sine b. So a in this case is zero degrees, b in this case is alpha. So I'll have the cosine of zero degrees plus alpha. That's the cosine of zero degrees times the cosine of alpha plus, well actually this is going to be minus because these are opposite. So make sure I have a minus sign in here. Sine of zero degrees, sine of alpha. Okay, cosine of zero we know is one, so this will be one times the cosine of alpha. The sine of zero is zero times the sine of alpha. And of course, zero times anything is zero, and one times cosine alpha is just cosine alpha. So that's what this rewrites and simplifies to. So this is taking this expression as a single function of alpha, meaning I don't have a sum, I don't have a difference, I don't have a lot of other um, things going on here except for this alpha because it says a single function of alpha. Now these can get a little bit more complicated as well when we start looking through the questions once we have this established. And for this example, we're going to have to kind of go back to some right triangle trig or a unit circle trig that we learned earlier in the class. So let's think about what this means. It says use the cosine of a sum and cosine of a difference identities to find both of these. We're looking for cosine s plus t and cosine s minus t. Well, let's write down cosine s plus t to start with. So that would be cosine of s, cosine of t minus, make sure I get that right, sine of s, sine of t. So in order to, for me to figure out what the sum of s plus t is, and I don't know what s and t are, these are angles that I don't know about. I could go through and do my re, uh, inverse trig functions and come up with a decimal approximation, but these are not common or standard angles that I'm familiar with. So if I look and see what we have here, I'm given the sine of s, and so I've, I'm given this right here. I'm given the sine of s as a negative four-fifths, and the minus sign comes from my formula. And then I'm given the sine of t is twelve-thirteenths. What I don't know are these two values. Now it says I'm in quadrant one, so everything is positive. Okay, so both of these will be positive. Well, how could I figure out the cosine of s and the cosine of t from here? Well, what we can do is I can use something like x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Or, if we're using the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals one. And the sine would be the y squared, so this would be x squared plus a negative four-fifths quantity squared equals one. x squared plus, because when I square a negative, I get a positive, 16 25ths equals one. x squared equals one minus 16 over 25 which will be 25 over 25 minus 16 over 25. So I'd get x squared equals 25 minus 16 is 9 25ths. This would mean that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 25ths, which is 3 fifths. But I'm in quadrant one, so that means x is going to be equal to a positive 3 fifths. Okay, so if I know <coughs> x is equal to positive 3 fifths, Really what I've done here then is I've used this identity. Cosine squared, we'll say s plus sine squared of s equals one. So now I know what I've done here is I've found out that cosine is equal to three fifths because I just plug this in for sine <coughs> as a negative four fifths. And so I just found out that cosine was three fifths. So even though we use this unit circle information, if I can just take that same idea and plug it into this Pythagorean identity, <coughs> I directly come out with um, my value for sine and cosine. So in this case, cosine of theta, or cosine of s, 
is three-fifths. And so that would go up here. Cosine of s is three-fifths. Now I need to figure out what the cosine of t is. <clears throat> well, we've learned something here already, and we know that the sine of t is 12 thirteenths. So if the sine of t is 12 thirteenths and I'm in quadrant one, that tells me that the cosine will be positive as well. So let's, let's not go to that unit circle, sine squared plus, or x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Let's go ahead and go to that Pythagorean identity, sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t equals one. So this is going to be 12 thirteenths squared plus cosine squared of t equals one. This is 144 over 169 plus cosine squared t equals one. Cosine squared of t was equal to one minus 144 over 169. You need to find a common denominator here. So it'd be 169 over 169 minus 144 over 169. These are kind of long problems, you see. And then 169 minus 144 would be 29 minus 4 is 5 over 169. So when I take the square root of both sides, <coughs> I get cosine of t is equal to plus or minus 5 thirteenths. Now I'm in quadrant one, that was given to me, so the cosine is positive, so this would be a positive 5 thirteenths. Now what that does is that comes clear back up here, 5 thirteenths, and then I can actually go through and work the problem. So 5 times 3 is 15, 13 times 5 is 65, and then I have a minus and negative is the same as a positive, 48 over 65. And then 48 plus 15, I'll sneak that down onto here, would be 63 over 65. Now I, I don't know the angles. I still don't know the angles. I could probably go back through and figure them out. Um, but from here, with this particular problem, uh, I have 63 over 65. Now I think I might have a sign error here. Ah, look at here, I didn't read all the instructions. This says quadrant one, all positive, but I didn't see this right here. S is in quadrant three. So if S is in quadrant three, that would mean they're both negative for angle S. So this is going to be anything for S is going to be negative, and the sign is already given to us as negative. So this would be a negative 15. Let me sneak that in here. Here we are. Negative 15 plus 48. That's going to be a little bit different problem. So this would be uh, 4 minus 1 is 3, and then 8 minus 5 is 3. So this would be 33 60 fifths. So be careful, I missed this. They're giving us not information about both angles, but they're splitting it up into two other pieces of information. So when we're looking for S in this particular case, this would be a negative three-fifths because I'm in quadrant three. So we want to update this to quadrant three. Okay, so make sure you read that fine print. I missed that, I only read the last bit of it. So that's the cosine of S plus T. This has been a lot of work. We need to go through and find the cosine of S minus T now. So for the cosine of S minus T, let's write out our formula. This would be cosine of S, cosine of T, the sine is opposite, sine of s, sine of t. Okay, so let's go ahead and come back up here. We just found cosine of t from here was 5 thirteenths. And let's go back up and see what else we have. We also were given that cosine of s was 3 fifths. Actually, that would be a negative three-fifths from down here, the same information. Cosine of s is negative three-fifths. And then up above in the information that was given at the beginning of this problem, the sine of s was the negative four-fifths. And they also gave me that the sine of t was 12 thirteenths. 
So simplifying from here, I have 3 times 5 is 15. The 3 is negative, so this would be negative 15 over 65 minus positive times a negative is a negative, 48 over 65. And then combining, I could combine these to negative 3 over 65, negative 63 over 65. So that's the cosine of the difference. And again, I could find all this without even knowing the angles. But it is a lot of work. If you'd rather use your right triangle trig, you could do that as well. And when I say you could use your right triangle trig, what I'm kind of referring to is taking this and thinking sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then drawing up your right triangle. This would be T. This would be opposite. This would be hypotenuse. And then you can go through and use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what this adjacent side is. So this adjacent side would be, um, I'm just going to call it A. So A squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. A squared is 169 minus 144. A squared is 25. A is 5. And then once I know that, then I can come up with the cosine of, in this particular case, T. And that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And I'm in quadrant 1, so it's positive. So I could come up with that same um, I'm sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse would be 5 over 13. So I can come up with that same value using the right triangle. And again, you just need to make sure you know what quadrant you're in and be sure you read both quadrants or both angles information and not just one. So you could use the unit circle approach or you could use uh, that right triangle trig. I kind of like, I, I don't know, I like both of them, I guess. You just have to keep track of your quadrants. The right triangle trig is a nice visual representation, and the other one is uh, kind of running through using an al algorithm that's really nice to work with as well. Now we can also work these problems backward, meaning I'm given the formula, and I'm basically asked to figure out what did this come from, or what am I trying to find the cosine or sine of. Now in this particular case, this matches the sum. So this would match the cosine of a plus b, because the formula for that is the cosine of A, cosine of B, minus, and this minus is important here, sine A, sine B. Okay, so then I can look at this and say, well, what are A and B? Well, A was 64 degrees, and B was 26 degrees. So if I add these together, the cosine is 64 plus 26 would be 80 plus 10 is 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees, we know, is 0. So this simplifies to 0. And it says to not use a calculator. Um, you're going to have a calculator on your exam, so if one of these came across, you could certainly plug it in. But you would be graded for your handwork, not your calculator work. So you have to have your work shown in order to get credit for that type of problem. Now, we haven't done much with our co-function, so let's look at some problems where we're working with the co-function identities. And again, we've actually worked with the co-function identities before, earlier in the class, uh, but we're going to be working with them a little bit more, and then we'll also be able to combine them with some other identities. Okay, it says write the function value in terms of the cofunction of a complementary angle. Okay, so let's recall what our cofunction identities look like. So for our cofunction identities, we know that sine goes with cosine, so I might be able to look at this and say, okay, sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta. Now I'm going to be working in degrees because my angle is given in degrees. So the way that this would rewrite then is sine of 18 degrees is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus 18 degrees. So the sine of 18 degrees is the cosine of 72 degrees. And so that would be the rewrite here. Now that's not a standard angle, and it's not an angle I know about sines and cosines of, but that's okay. Uh, they just wanted me to rewrite this. Let's try another one of those. And this one will be in radians. And again, if you're not good with working with the fractions or thinking in radians, I would recommend converting these to degrees. And in the process of converting to degrees and working with them in degrees, you're also learning more about radians as well. So one thing that we could do here is we could convert this to degrees, but really for this problem, I don't need to because 
I'm not adding or subtracting anything other than our radians at the end. So let's look to see what we have here. This is sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta. Sine of theta equals the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is the equivalent radian expression. So let's go ahead and write what we have here. Sine of pi over 18 is equal to the cosine of pi over 2 minus pi over 18. I'd want to find a common denominator and so that would be 9 pi over 18 minus pi over 18 is equal to the cosine of 9 pi minus pi is 8 pi over 18 and of course that reduces so this would be 4 pi over 9. So if you did this problem and you converted to degrees at the end you need to convert back to radians. So make sure you convert back because if you don't then you're not going to have that exact form um, that we're looking for there. Let's go ahead and look at another example. In this example we will be working with um, cosecant and we'll have to be able to work with not only the cosecant but we'll have to be able to work with the co-function for that. Now it says match the given expression. We're just going to work it. In my math lab they give you a whole list of ones to match this with. It says do not use a calculator and again you can use a calculator to check your answers but you're going to be graded on the work that you show anyway. Okay so we know that the cosecant of some angle is equal to the secant of 90 degrees minus that angle. So the cosecant of 54 degrees would equal the secant of 90 degrees minus 54 degrees. So 90 degrees minus 54 degrees would be 46 degrees. Okay. Sorry, 36 degrees. Now I could also rewrite that. So this would be one potential solution. But I could also rewrite that then as 1 over the cosine of 36 degrees. So that would be another rewrite. So what you need to do is in my math lab look at the list that's provided to you of all the different options and see which one matches that. So either of these would be fine. Um, usually you don't want it in fraction form so you'd usually stop here. But again this one could be listed as well so I want to just make sure that you're aware of that. Okay, let's look at some other examples. So for this one they ask us to use the cofunction identities to find an angle theta between 0 and 90 degrees. So this is important because there could be more than one solution but they only want the solution that's between 0 and 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is both sides right now are in two different functions or in two different trig functions. We want to rewrite them so they're both using the same trig function and then equate the arguments. So we'll use the cofunction identity secant theta is equal to cosecant theta, or sorry, cosecant of 90 degrees minus theta. That is the identity that we're going to use, and that's on our list of cofunction identities at the beginning. So in place of this secant theta, we'll rewrite this as cosecant 90 degrees minus theta. And this right hand side doesn't change. This is cosecant of 5 theta minus 36 degrees. Sorry, that's a plus 36 degrees it was given to us. Now because the cosecant is the same, in order for this to actually be equal, the arguments would have to be the same. So I'm going to equate the arguments. 90 degrees minus theta equals 5 theta plus 36 degrees. Okay, so there's several different ways that we can solve this. Um, I'm going to subtract 5 theta from both sides and subtract 90 degrees from both sides. And I'll get my theta on the left and my degrees on the right. So I have negative 6 theta equals, okay, then we have our 36 minus 90 here. Now we're get, again, we're in degree mode for this problem, but we could also work this problem in radians. So in degree mode, when I take my 36 minus 90, I get negative 54 degrees. And I divide both sides through by negative 6. And you get theta, 54 divided by 6, negative divided by negative is a positive, 54 divided by 6 is 9. So I get, uh, for this solution, 9 is definitely in between 0 and 90 degrees, 
So I get theta equals 9 degrees. So that makes this a true statement if theta is 9 degrees. Okay, now these can be a little bit more complicated. When both sides of the um, equation or the identity have not just a single like a theta, but both of them have some sort of a an algebraic expression involving theta. So let's pull that one in because again when you come across these in your homework I want to make sure that you have some good notes to work off of on how to solve these. So instructions here will be similar. They want us just to find the angle theta that makes the statement true. So they're not giving us a 0 to 90 degrees or anything, but we want to stay near the origin if possible. We want to stay close and then if I find an angle and I don't see it in the list that are possible, I'll, what I'll do is I'll rotate that angle and find reference angles in the second, third, or fourth quadrants to see if I can make this a true statement as well. So it looks like we have tangents and cotangents here. We need to get both sides in terms of tangent or both sides in terms of cotangent. So I think the way that we can start with this is I'm going to take the cotangent and rewrite it in terms of tangent. So remember the cotangent of theta is equal to the tangent and we're in degrees, 90 degrees minus theta. So this is what I'm going to use and you should always write down what identities you're referring to. So that would look like on this particular case tangent of 90 degrees minus this entire angle. And so I have to put parentheses up, so theta plus 18 degrees. Kind of didn't fit. I'll back that up a little bit. Tangent 3 theta minus 32 degrees. Okay, so the trick on this one was rewriting this side. So this just said cotangent of whatever is in here is equal to 90 degrees minus the tangent of whatever is in here. So that's what I did as I took the tangent of 90 degrees minus whatever this angle is. And that angle happens to be a binomial. The next thing we'll do is we will distribute tangent 3 theta minus 32 degrees is equal to the tangent of 90 degrees minus theta minus 18 degrees. And again we're trying to get this simplified and then once both sides 90 minus 18 would be our 72 degrees minus theta. Once we have both sides with the same trig function then in order for this to be a true statement the arguments have to equate or the arguments have to be equal. So I'm going to add theta to both sides and I'll add 32 degrees to both sides. So 3 theta plus theta is 4 theta. Okay, these cancel and I'm left with 4 theta equals, it looks like, 104 degrees. Dividing both sides through by 4, I'll have 104 and again we're in degree mode here but all of these don't have to be in degrees, they could be in radians and if you have trouble with that you can convert them. I get 26 degrees and then you, at the end you'd have to convert it back. So in this particular case I get theta equals 26 degrees. So we've looked at using these um, cosine sum and difference identities and we've also looked at using the cofunction identities and now we're going to take those same values and we're going to work at establishing identities using them. So establishing identities if you'll recall are the ones that we learned in a previous section where we start with the more complicated side, we work toward the simpler side, uh, we convert things to sine and cosine, we factor, we multiply by conjugates. So there's not one tried and true thing that will always work, uh, but what we want to do here then is to just establish an identity. Sorry, I was talking and writing at the same time, establishing an identity. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at one that we want to establish. So let's look at the cosine of pi plus x. And we say that this is equal to a negative cosine of x and what I want to do is to prove or show that that's true. Well what we're going to use here is the cosine of a plus b. That's equal to the cosine of a, cosine of b, minus, it's always opposite, I always have to check that, sine of a, sine of b. So what we'll do is plug in the pi plus x for a and b. 
So this is a cosine of pi, cosine of x, minus sine of pi, sine of x. So the cosine of pi is negative one, cosine of x I can't really do anything with, the sine of pi is zero, and then the sine of x I really can't do anything with either. But zero times anything is zero, so that all cancels, and a negative times the cosine of x is negative cosine of x. So it's been established because I started with the more complicated side, I applied my identity, and I wrote what that is. You have to always make sure that you write down your steps, and then I got to the right hand side and they matched. So again, you have to include this step right here of showing the identities that you're using. Let's do one more. Let's do um, let me see this one. Yeah, it looks like they gave us two of the same identities in the row in my math lab, so let's me let me find one that's a little bit different. Okay, this one will be interesting. So for this one we have the cosine of three pi over two plus x equals sine of x. And you should be able to see that this is pretty similar. It's the sum, so I'm going to use the cosine of a plus b. That's equal to the cosine of a, cosine of b, minus, the sine will be opposite, sine a sine b. And then what we'll do is we'll substitute in three pi over two for a, and we'll substitute in x for b. So this is a cosine of three pi over two, cosine of x, minus the sine of three pi over two, times the sine of x. So the cosine of three pi over two is zero, cosine of x is just cosine of x. The sine of three pi over two is negative one. So the negative, or the minus comes from the formula, the sine of three pi over two is negative, so that comes from here. Minus a negative is the same as a positive, positive times the sine of x, and I've established that because it equals back to what I'm looking at here. So again, always show all of your work, never skip any steps, always show the identities that you're using, so for instance, I wrote out this identity and then I applied it, because you'll be graded on how much work you're showing and how much accurate work you're showing. And the more steps you skip, uh, the more points that will be lost, so make sure you show all those steps. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help. Just go ahead and send a screenshot of the problem and a screenshot of your work, and we can work from there. Good luck.